Yeah, and then here, here's one I had a little problem with for a while, but I got over it real soon. And that's the old empty nest. I, you know, when my boys grew up and, and got out, uh, if, if, if when, when all you youngers grow out of the house and you lose, here you go, who am I, what do I believe in, what body should I live by, you start asking those questions, you start going through identity crisis, then your identity was in being a parent. You know what? I, I, I learned quickly. Just go ahead and rejoice. That's right. Because they're going to leave. But I promise you, they're coming back. I try to fake me. Now look. I try to fake me out here for a look. Look. I promise you, they're coming back and they're bringing more with them. Okay? And if you feed them, they will come. Alright. So. That's what I'm buying for this. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Stephen, he's your boy. <laughs> that's, okay. why, that's why I, I, I got out of here. I got, I, I got this little two bedroom trailer talk, man, and ain't nobody came back and guess what? <laughs> here it is. <laughs> well, you know what? We made it work. Well, that's right. We so, so, so the empty nest, my, my, my life, my life. Part of my responsibility and part of my calling from God was to raise my children. But my identity was not a parent. My identity was a child of God. My responsibility was to raise these children. And so sometimes, now I'm going to tell you what, the, the best thing that ever happened was grand young. Yeah. Grand youngers are a reward for not killing the youngers. Yeah. Right. I thought I was going to have to raise mine from the dead. <laughs> they're, also, they're also revenge. They're also revenge. That's right. That's exactly right. So, 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 and my grandbabies are so cool. Do they bubble? Could I hear some chocolate? Sure. Sure. <laughs> but daddy, they, they, my son, but daddy is, is, is it's nine o'clock at night. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. They're going home with you. There. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they found out the grandchildren goes out to use us. It's like our kids learn how to use us. Oh, our grandparents, our grandchildren, my grandchildren use me. Still good to live in It's a happy, yeah. Sunday, when we left here Sunday, and, and, and uh, I went to eat with Daniel and Michelle and Emmy and Annalene, and then they said they were going to the park. Well, I went home, brought Linda some lunch. I come back, and I would sit there at the park, and they were leaving. They were going to Walmart. I had to go to Walmart, so we got in there, and so Emmy's over there helping me uh, pick out the stuff I'm picking out that I had to buy. And then she's then she tried, she said, Papa. Uh -oh. I said, What? She said, Will you buy me a toy? Uh -oh. <laughs> and I said, Sure. <laughs> I said, she said, Well let's go. And I said, No, we gotta go pick up Annalene first. I said, No, then it hit me on the way over. Yeah. Oops. I said, We gotta ask your mama first. So she walked and said, Mama, mama, mama. Can we have a toy? And she said, if Paul Paul's buying. <laughs> and I said, I'm buying. But the big mistake was trying to get them there to get them to pick out their toys. So I, I actually psyched out Emory. There was a little thing of sea monkeys. And she said, is that? I said, see a little microscope on the side of those sea monkeys? They're going to be looking all kinds of ways. She says, I think to get Paul Paul. I said, well, I don't know you got to look through that glass and see him. She says, they look, I really like monkeys. I said, look white seahorses. She says, they can be fun. I said, sure. She said, I got what I want. <laughs> and Anna Lane picked up everything. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, but we come back and I paid for it and I started to walk away. And then, and then Mama said, Paul Paul, can we have the receipt, please? <laughs> I said, why? Well, because I, I don't want to walk out the store with these toys. So I, so I said, well, I'll, if anybody gets caught without a receipt, it'll be me, but that'll be all right. I give us a receipt. But, but remember, kids, grandkids are awesome. So the empty nest, you know, you know what the best thing, the best cure for empty nest is? Is parents just just get the chance to re get, a, get reacquainted with each other and have fun together and find out that if life's not over, it's just beginning again. It really is. I found that life was enjoyable. I was having a good time. I really, really was. You know, and I was really having a good time and then Bethany came back a few months ago. Yeah. 
and she came back, bless her heart. And but now she's gone again. I hope she stays gone for at least a year. And y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not saying stay gone for us. I meant stay at that rehab for a year. Hope she gets to stay there. Okay. So remember, my role, or, or I'm not identified as a parent. A parent is my calling. Okay, it's my calling. My job is my calling. My, you know, if if if, if, if I have one, I lose a spouse. By death or divorce, here's what I tell people all the time. They say, well, I don't think I can go on without them. And here's what I tell them, especially if it's a divorce. I tell them this, divorce or death. I tell them if it's a divorce, I don't think I can go on without them. And here's what I tell them. God knows that they're not going where he's taking you. So if they're not going where he's taking you, and trust God to take care of both of them. All right? So now, a move from a secure environment with your friends and your family, a relationship. Now, now you've lost your friends and your family. You're not with them. And, and now you've lost your identity because, uh, again, you were, your identity was in a relationship. I love my friends. I love my family. You can pick your friends. You can't pick your family. <laughs> Now, Linda, Linda is Italian, and I'm redneck Indian. <laughs> and they said we're going to have a family reunion. So Linda, Linda's family can't have a family reunion because of the witness protection program. <laughs> and my family was going to have a family reunion as soon as the parole board was. <laughs> <laughs> so now, the identity is not your friends and your family. Again. Some people come in your life and they stay in your life for a lifetime. Some people only stay in your life for a moment. But every one of them affects your life for a lifetime. Remember that. Every one of them affects your life for a lifetime. So because they affect your life for a lifetime, God, let me learn the lessons that I need to learn. Again, some people are not going where you're going. If they're not going where God's taking me, then I don't need them there because it's going to cause a hindrance. Exactly. When God told Abraham, I want you to go into Canaan, who did he pull with him when he told him not to take him? I mean, did you go? He carried a lot. Mm -hmm. Caused problems. Okay? Old said disability. You can't do what you used to can do. Now, the older I get, the older I get, the better I was. And there's things I can't do that I used to do with ease. I can't do so much with ease anymore. You know, I was actually, I was working out the other day, and there was this older guy beside me, and, and he only had, like, the weights you need. You pull it out with the weights, you know. And so I, it's the butterfly. And he's only got, like, three up there. And he's doing this. He's going, oh, oh. And I get there and put it all the way down. I got 150 pounds on. I'm doing this. I'm going, I feel so good. <laughs> And then I walk into another room where the, where, the, where the machine is where you can do the bench press. And there's a, another guy older than me. And I'm thinking, I was already, the other guy made me feel good about myself because he only had three and I had 150. And I get over there and the big neck guy's over there, older than me. And he's got like 100, 200 pounds. He's going. And I said, whoa. <laughs> so he crawls out from underneath and I'm thinking, he's through. He throws more weights on him. Crawls by cutter. And I said, God, please let him be through. He throws more weights on him. And I said, when he got through, his wife and I said, Hoss, are you through yet? I said, I'd call you sir or Hoss or something. He said, yeah. He said, I'm a little rusty. Uh -huh. <laughs> So I waited until he left. I waited until he left. Yeah. Did, did you lose trouble once? Yes. <laughs> now, I was mean, though, because I, was good. I, I can't remember. I, I think I worked out with like 100 pounds. I just went in and worked out. I did like 10 reps, 10 reps, 10 reps, 10 reps, incline, lay down, and only 100 pounds. But there was another machine that went up to 210 pounds. It was a, it was a push press instead of a bench press. And Bethany's boyfriend, was coming in. And so I put it on as far as it could go. Oh, <laughs> and 
and I saw him walking in the door. When I walked in the door, I pushed that thing all the way out. <laughs> By the time he got to me, I said, I said, 50. Boom. <laughs> 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 yeah, I said, I said, do you want to work out with me, buddy? He said, oh. <laughs> 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 I know. That was wisdom. That weren't me. That was wisdom. <laughs> okay. So again, remember, God already knew what you could do. God knows. And just remember this, if there's something you cannot hear, what I've discovered about God, you discover it too. If God allows you to lose something, he always replaces it with something else. Like guys that lose their sight, all of a sudden their other senses become so keen. Guys that lose their hearing, other senses become so keen. So, so if God allows you to lose something, if you lose your strength, he's going to give it back to you another way. So, so don't sit back and go, again, who am I? What do I believe? Where's God in all this? Just say, God, okay, if this is taken away from me, obviously you got something else in mind. Help me see it. That prevents identity crisis. And then, then the loss of an intimate friendship. Uh, I mean, what, like, I mean, a real good friend. Either they've done you wrong or, or they just left or they died. You know, if, if they leave or you don't get if something happens there and all of a sudden here you go again, you start doubting God and doubting everything and you're getting ready to go into the end of crisis, you've got to be careful because I am what? A child of God. No matter if I'm disabled, I'm a child of God. If I lose my job, I'm a child of God. If my spouse dies, I'm a child of God. If I have a divorce, I'm still a child of God. Empty nest, I'm a child of God. If I move from a secure environment, I'm still a child of God. Also a disability, I'm a child of God. Financial loss. A lot of times people, their financial loss. And, and when they get that financial loss, uh, all of a sudden, that they, they begin to think, well, people are going to look down on them because they don't have the money they once had. And you find out, actually, sometimes it's the best thing that could ever happen to you. Because now you stopped trusting your money and you started trusting God. Do I have any power to help myself now that success has driven from me, has been driven from me? That's Job talking. Uh, or here, here's one of his more versions. Is it not that I have no help in myself and that wisdom is quite driven from me? Or do you think I can pull myself up by my bootstraps? Well, I don't have any boots. He's lost it all. I can tell you, my wife died. I thought I had lost it all. But you know what? God showed me power and anointing. God showed me something I'd never seen before. And so I learned. I wouldn't go through it again. I wouldn't wish on anybody. But what I learned from it, I would not trade for anything. Here's one here. This is kind of this is kind of tight. But I want you to watch it now. And again, this this is this none of this none of this stuff I'm talking about is from a judgmental point of view. This is from a, why would this happen? Or is this what happened? Or could this happen? This is what this is. All right. This identity crisis can be, uh, be a severe form of identity confusion from childhood trauma or trauma or sexual abuse. Loss of sexual identity. This has been a big thing lately because of the bathroom deal here in North Carolina and because of what the, the running platform now uh, for some of the, some of the uh, uh, candidates. But again, that loss of sexual identity, rejecting your God-given sexuality, this isn't always what does it, but this has a lot to do with it. And, and I've noticed over the years that, that a child that was in trauma or sexual abuse they were either very reclusive or they were very sexually overactive. When I got my little, when I got Bethany, I already told you, you know, Bethany was, was molested by her stepfather. And, and they told me when I got her that when I had to take that class, I had to go to classes to get her. And when we went to classes, they told us, said 50% said of these kids wind up in jail. And it said a bigger part of them that become very sexually uh, aggressive. 
And when they told me all that, then I started going back and thinking about people I knew earlier in my life. And once I found out the abuse they had gone through, and all of a sudden, up a whole new avenue where I used to feel bad about that person, I felt feeling bad about that person, started praying for that person. Because I understood then, it's because of that childhood trauma that they had been through that was causing this problem. So, of course, Bethany was very reclusive. And even when I went to go see her for the first time, y'all heard the story, when I went to see her for the first time, she was four years old. This happened when she was two. And again, it happened when she was four. I was her seventh dad. I come in, they said, no man can touch her. No man can even talk to her. Very few of the foster mothers can have anything to do with her. She's just, she's just away from everybody. And I walked in the room and said, we know kids, kids love you, but this time, you got to understand, don't be disappointed. And there was the social worker and the foster mom, and there was Beverly, and they went and sat down, and I walked in, and Bethany was hiding, four years old. And when she saw me, she ran and jumped in my arms and hugged my neck and said, my big daddy won't let anything happen to me. And everybody just started crying, and we didn't know what was going on. You know, because everybody's got to tell me she's not going to come to you. And she's been like that ever since. You know, you, you see her, she's hung with daddy. You know what I'm saying? She hangs right with me. Good, bad, or ugly. <laughs> she's like, I'm a daddy. Yeah. Okay. Don't you think part of that, the people that go through these traumas, is because they don't understand they are a child of God and have a mother? Exactly. And they don't understand the concept of that's right. And that's why they get so confused and go do all this. Exactly. You're right. And it's hard for us as Christians to look at these people without judging them. And we need to understand they're broken. You don't. You they do. Don't yeah. I've learned a long time ago, judgment, you do not judge people. Do not judge people. You love them. You love them. If they're not like you, it doesn't matter. Love them because God loves them. 